God loves the rejected. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, there was a story of a girl whose parents rejected her for becoming a Christian. They were surprised that she became one in the first place. They did everything they could in order to change her mind, but when they could not make her change her mind, they ended up rejecting her. But thank God this beautiful young lady found love amongst the people of God. There are people in the world who have been rejected for one reason or the other. You might not have been rejected for becoming a Christian. You might have been rejected in your place of work for doing the right thing. Some people have lost their job because they couldn't lie about something. Not only in the outside world, but even in families, there are those who have been rejected by their family. They always felt like the odd sheep of the family. Wherever you go, you always felt like the odd sheep. There is a message for you today. That message is saying that God loves you. I want you to know that even if you have performed poorly in your Christian walk, or if you have sinned against God, what God wants you to do is repent. God loves a reject. I don't know why exactly, but there is a clear theme in the Bible that shows us that God loves those who are forgotten, cast away, kicked down, and rejected. Don't you know what God has said about you? Jeremiah 31 verse 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. The love that God is showing you is not the kind of love that is expressed with the mouth only. God has loved you with an everlasting love. It means He cannot stop loving you. He watched you in your mother's womb when the hands were still webbed in her belly. He created you. He formed you. He redeemed you. You are His. God doesn't make mistakes and you are not a mistake. So long you have lived with this feeling of rejection, as if you don't belong, but you do belong. You belong to God, and He cares about you more than you will ever know, more than you will ever understand. We often feel like there is no one there for us. We are living all alone. Family and friends have gone. We cannot speak to anyone about what we are aging through because we feel alone. People think being alone means there is no one around you, but that is not true. You can be in a room full of people and still feel alone because that room full of people don't know what you are going through. They don't know what you are experiencing. But there is one person who knows what you are going through and that is God. There is one person who knows your pain and that is God. He knows everything about you. He knows when you sit down and when you rise up. He knows every single one of your thoughts, even before you think it. You will never surprise Him. He knows what you are going to do before you do it. He knows all your desires. He knows what is in your heart. You have experienced empty promises from so many people. They promised they would never leave, but they left. They promised they would never forsake you, but they still did. I want to tell you today that you should never feel rejected because God loves you. You may be thinking that God has left you just like everyone else. I want you to know that the last thing God will do is leave you alone. God will never leave you for you continue feeling rejected. That is not how God works. The God that we serve, the true God says that He has loved us with an everlasting love. He has shown us His loving kindness. Why should you be feeling down? Why should you be feeling like there is no hope for you? Why should you be feeling like God has abandoned you? Men may reject you. People may write you off. People may say to you that you are not qualified for a job. People may say you are too small to fight. But remember that even David was too small to fight Goliath. But he did not forget that God has not rejected him. He did not forget that God is with him. The moment you realize that God is always with you, that Goliath in your life will fall. That giant in your life will fall. It doesn't matter what people say about your height, about your looks, about your ability. 
It doesn't matter what your qualifications are. When you realize that God has not rejected you, their comments will never bother you. We often focus much on the rejection of people. Once they tell you that you cannot measure up, or when they tell you that you don't count, you dwell too much on these words, and you let it beat you down. Look at yourself, and look at what God is saying about you. He is saying that He has loved you with an everlasting love. I don't know if we know what everlasting means. It means eternity. It means it has no end. It means it is forever. The love of God for you knows nothing called end. Just because the man or woman left you and told you you are unlovable does not mean it is true. The devil is a liar. You are more than lovable. You in the eyes of the Lord are worth dying for. He chose you, but do you choose him? He loves you, but do you love him? When you were lost, he found you. When you were broken, he mended you. When you cried, he comforted you. You have no idea what you mean to God. He only wants the best for you. You are precious to him. He would never want to harm you. God would never steer you wrong. God is not the one out to get you. How could he be when he sent his only son to save you? God shines his light into your life, but all we ever do is run into the darkness. You chose to love a human more than him, and when they hurt you, he is the one who fixes you. When they lie to you, he is the one who holds the truth, and when they leave you, it is he who will always be there for you. God is the only constant we have in our lives. Even when you ignore him, he will still love you. Matthew chapter 22, verse 33 to 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Love God with all your heart. I want you to take this message to be a message directly from God to you. He wants you to know that he is not planning to send you to hell. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But that right there is what people struggle with, the fact that God loves them. And I too struggled with this. Why does God love me? Why would he love me? With all my sins, with all my weaknesses, why does he love me? I deserved hell, and yet he loves me enough to give his son to die on the cross for me. My friend, God loves you, and he is not out to destroy you. 1 John 3 verse 1 Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. The love of God for us is not what should be underrated. His love for us is great. We say to ourselves or the people close to us, I love you. You know how you feel about them before saying these three words. Imagine what God felt or feels about us before showing his love for us that he went to the extent of sacrificing his son to save us. We should never think that God is planning to send you to hell. That is ridiculous. He wouldn't create you in order to send you to hell. And I wish I could go to all the four corners of the earth and tell every man and woman of every tribe and kingdom of every race and creed of every color and background, that God loves you. My prayer is that you and I may come to the place that Apostle Paul came to in the book of Romans. Romans 8 verses 38 and 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are loved. God has promised to bless you and keep you 
and it is all because of his love. He says he will be with you everywhere you go. This is also the evidence of his love for you. It doesn't matter what people are saying about the love of God. It doesn't matter what they think about this love. What you should keep in your heart at all times is the fact that God loves you and he will never stop showing it to you that he loves you. This is the time to seek for the love of God. It is time to find the love of God. In everything you are going through, find the love of God because it is that love that can keep you and save you from all troubles. What the love of God has done for us. 1. The love of God has made us become his children. This is one of the benefits that we have gotten through the love Christ has shown us. When we were a sinner, when we were in the world, we were as dirty as a filthy rag. We have no right to come to God because God cannot behold sin. Jesus came in through because of that love, and we were transferred to becoming his children. That is a great transition there. Now we have the right to be in his presence and talk to him like a father. Through his love also, Jesus made us his friends. Jesus realized us from being servants. John 15 verse 15 No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. This is something you will never want to miss. In this same way, the life that has made us